is for both your professional life and also your personal life. So I'm saying clearly that it is in the interest of all to have documentations, employment contracts for anyone who's employed. All right, so before I move from this screen, is there anyone who wants to comment on anything I've said earlier? All right, um, Alyssa here at La Park. And so right, well, I was just listening to you and when I looked at it, because I've always heard that a contract can be oral written, right? How do you really verify an oral um, contract? So though, this, are, this is saying to us, based on what you're saying, as an organization or even a regular employer, as long as you're an employer and get somebody um, to work, you must ensure that everything is documented, right? Definitely. So <laughs> while a contract can be oral or in writing, based on our learning today, a oral contract is not in interest of the employer at all. Right. Right? Because you would definitely have no means or evidence of what you would have done in relation to this worker in the event that there is some kind of um, issue, um, dispute. You really have absolutely nothing to defend yourself. And nobody wants to be caught in that particular situation. Okay. All right, so you're definitely correct on that one. Any other reactions? And I have yes, Miss. Okay, I, have one, I have one question. Uh -huh. um, Who is that, Sam? Yes. yes. Why do we have so many unwritten rules? Why don't we write the rules so we can follow them? Sam, let me tell you something. This area is one of those ever-changing areas because as soon as feedback, as may I go ahead. Right. So Sam, this is one of the continuously changing um, spaces in life, working with. Human I, think we, I think we should do better because and, what, you, what, what this does, it takes people into areas where they don't know where they're going and they get trapped and tricked and they don't have trust. So employers lose, true. employees lose, and it doesn't do anybody any good. And I think that's that's the, the gravamen of this. We'd not be having these discussions or training if we had rules. They would, right. you know, you follow you're the very rules. Correct. You're very correct because... One of the things that I do know that the Ministry of Labor needs to now look at is writing rules that govern fixed term contracts. Both the employer groupings and the trade union groupings have been lobbying for this for a very long time because we are now over the vexed issue of whether or not um, fixed term contracts are necessary. And we all agree that yes, they are necessary, but it is not what you do, but how you do it. And until we have some of those rules um, firmly entrenched in quote unquote law, we will have to keep ourselves current like we're doing now in terms of what to look for and um, how to operate. And that is why just like the medical profession, um, once a doctor is trained, they have to con do continuous learning because things change. And similarly, in labor relations, there is what we call a changing world of work. And as the world of work changes- Can you look here, please? Yes, uh, Michelle? Are you speaking to us? So I'm going to find the email Cache sent to Maria, read her. I think there's an interference. Michelle, can you turn off my seats? So Maria is an SVP. All SVP and above are on contracts. They don't pay pension, they pay IRA. She sent Maria the pension documents. Of course, no Can you miss that? Our, in a new field, we have to do continuous learning. So yes, I agree with you on that comment, Sam. 
just put out other forms and send it. Um, can we, Michelle, can you mute? Okay. All right, so I've muted Michelle. All right, so Sam, it is part of the changing world of work. And this is not just happening in Jamaica, it's happening globally. Right? But I think, I think, yes. I think countries that don't, don't have rules, the workers are the ones that are disenfranchised because employers will make sure that they're not going out on a limb mm. because they don't know if they fall where they'll drop in, if they'll drop into an alligator mouth. So they, mm. they're very careful not to go out on a limb and employees mm. lose this, this way. They don't gain anything with this, this sort mm. of going in no man's land. And I think as yes. somebody in the Ministry of Labour, you need to, there need to be a, a, an intellectual discussion about mm. how have workers benefited by all these rules. They have been disenfranchised by, by, by persons who are unproductive and, and workers are not taught how to be productive. And there's only one way for workers to gain in this country and is to be more productive. There's no other way. They could oh, make unwritten rules. They could do everything. Employers are going to make sure that they, they set their own rules and employees are the ones who bear the brunt of this disenfranchise. It's not helping the employees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, can I say kind of following on what Sam uh, I agree with him to some extent Yes, uh, uh -huh. workers are being disenfranchised and particularly our helpers or security guards mm -hmm. the, the people who are on these ridiculous contracts I mean how do they live Yeah. I mean yeah. I have a helper I, don't, I pay her about the minimum wage because what she do for me in a day would take me months <laughs> You know, and I'm cognizant that she has a child, she's a single mother, you know, all of those things. And I think majority of persons do pay above the minimum wage. Um, it's just that it is not formalized. Um, on, on the other hand, no, where you have a high <laughs> performer, hold on, where you have a high performer, but somebody who works at a consistently high pace, someone who when you give them more responsibility, they don't shy away from it. They take it, they run with it. These people are a special class. The principles. They? Say uh, that again. You, right, I'm asking you your first name. Oh, I'm sorry, Annette Samuels. I'm from okay. PBS, Productive Business Solutions, um, PBS mm -hmm. Group. Okay. Right. So, so let, us, let us look at people like salespeople. Mm -hmm. who, are a special breed. You have the very high performance who are consistently high. Every budget to get to them, then blow it away. You know? Mm -hmm. And they earn proportionately higher. Mm -hmm. How can you then say that you want to... And also, you mentioned that we're in a new era. You're quite right. It, a lot of people are working hybrid. Some people work two days at home, three days in the office, all that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it, we are evolving into a completely new era which we have never seen before no, no, no. it is totally new how right. do you then why is it so difficult to document yes. every single thing because it's changing yeah, what it's happens, constantly changing right for instance yeah um and i'm engaging you and it and sam a little bit more yes. for instance, in 2019 the way we worked is totally different Totally, totally different. From now, mm -hmm. in 2019, nobody could fathom that we could be in several different spaces, hundreds of um, kilometers away from each other. But we are interacting in a classroom setting because yeah, many people said it, it could never work, but it took a pandemic to show us that it can work. And what is happening also in employment is that we're talking about contracts and some, and Annette, I'm engaging you a little bit more. We're talking about contracts and writing down these things. Yes, yeah. What is happening now globally is that people don't even want this. When you say this, what do you mean? They don't even want employee, employer relationships anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That is a fact, Julian. That is a fact. Boy. And I, I, still, if you... I, still, I still contend that as trade unionists and as leaders in the labor market, we mm -hmm. need to talk to workers about productivity. 
And yes. there's no there's no way around it. You could go Yeah, agreed. We agree. Door. We agree. There's no way around it. Sam, we to I totally agree. Sam. But what about the worker? Hold a second. Um Annette. Hold a second, Annette. Sam, mm -hmm. <coughs> I agree with it totally. If I touch productivity now, we're going totally off track. Because no, let us touch it briefly because what about this? The, 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 those, Gillian, yes, what about is. those set of employees who come in every day, they clock in, they do nothing, they're living on them phone, <laughs> they're on social media, they walk up and down, they're chatting, them distracting other people. Those, yeah, we have, those, they don't yes, we do. Exist. No, 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 we have them, Sam. We have them. Come on, we have them. So, Annette, what is going on is that we have to determine whether or not those are in fact employees. And That's a good question. Well, now you're talking. Well, you're doing work. No, you're talking. But they are there and they're very cunning. In how they hide. You can't see what they're doing. Exactly. Sometimes they're missing. Oh, they're gone on the road for something. They're gone whole day. All right. I would want to deal with that on a productivity. Okay. But All right. Let me respond to it to say that I don't hold those workers accountable for that kind of activity you know, or lack of activity. I but hold it with all due it. regards. You need a superstructure to control it, those things. Who is because it, Julian? Who you would hold? Who? I hold the supervisors. No, but you're they, right. They, you're they absolutely right. They're all employees. They will not make any production. They will Let not me see make any statement. production. If it is that those people are not performing right. according to expectation, they should not be in the workplace. I absolutely agree. Because they, they cause a lot of problems for other people. All right. So what I'm saying here is that we're talking about employment contracts. And we need to address our attention to the fact that I'm seeing you like Parkton. A little bit, I'll take a question. I'm seeing globally that workers don't want to work like this anymore. The new generation, I don't know if it's Gen Z, we're calling Gen Z or whatever is this generation. They are not, they are not um, interested in full-time employment. They are not interested in working 10, 15 years with any company. They're interested in just making some money and they're moving from one place to the other. So I see we have a couple of entities, um, for instance, those that are in graphic arts and all of that. Those persons, they want to work for themselves. They want to just um, get a contract, um, not an employee-employer contract, but some kind of task work, piece work. So they do something, and once they've done that thing, then they move on to something else, right? That is the kind of engagement that they want. They don't want to be in an employee-employee relationship with vacation leave, sick leave. They are not interested in that. That's they true, Jillian. And you know why? Because I'm Jillian, made, sorry. Yes, they, I mean, um, those, those, the younger generation, because yes. their side hustle pay them probably three, four times than what the employer going to pay them. Exactly. You can't, you can't blame them. You can't blame them. Exactly. So we're moving from a place where this formality that we're talking about is going to be the, the, the order of the day. So each organization, whether public sector that's on today or private sector, you are going to have to address your mind to the fact that some of these persons so, are going to be to contractors to you soon. Oh, to break. Okay, um, La Parton, do you want to weigh in now? Yes. Um, so I was just going to backtrack a bit to um, what... And it was saying, and then you respond to it in terms of persons. Sometimes you, they are employed, they come, they waste time, they sit on their phone, and they do nothing really, or they are always underperforming. Now, this person's in a contract. You have a contract with this employee. This contract is for one year, and all of this starts happening within maybe the first six months of the contract and stuff like that, right? And no earlier you said that. Persons are of the notion that if you are in a contract due process, you don't necessarily have to follow due process in ending a contract and stuff like that. So I am I want to ask you in this regard, such um employee in the organization, a contract for one year, within six months there are issues with the staff. How do we proceed to end this contract before the, the, the end date of the contract? 
All right, so you have fast tracked my presentation by asking me that question. Oh. <laughs> I will still um, begin answering. The first thing is that every single contract has to have firm termination clauses. If, as you have indicated, there is a performance issue, you need to be documenting what that issue is. You need to be raising it with the employee and giving definitive timelines for whatever is the um, corrective action. And you need to reassess. And from there, you can start effecting your termination. What we have happening is this. Persons will receive, a person will receive a letter to say that you're not doing so and so. And you are, as a result, you're terminated with immediate effect. Let us break it apart now, my friends. If the person is dismissed with immediate effect, that means not even breeze blow between the issue and the quote unquote um, right of an appeal. You follow what I'm saying? I follow you. The person must have a chance to take corrective action. If that fails, then you can go through with your termination, right? And have all the documentation in place. A lot of organizations think that once we pay them the correct money that the government say, that is all to it. No. <clears throat> termination by reason of dismissal, the one that you said you're fired, mm -hmm. it has to do three things. It has to pass, I call the litmus test. It has to, one, the reason must stand scrutiny, right? The reason the person is being terminated must stand scrutiny. So therefore, you must state the reason that the person has been terminated. Too many of these letters don't even have that in it, right? right? The second thing, so when you're contemplating the termination, the first thing you need to do, and if you're represented by an attorney, and I have been speaking to the legal counsel on this, is that they first must establish what is the reason that this person is being terminated. Do not come a flat, you do not hide behind the post, because guess what? After a while, all of that comes up in the wash. So the second thing, after you've determined that the, the reason can stand scrutiny, the manner in which a person is terminated must stand scrutiny. 